impact, what's important to the market and your career is how you solve these problems. I, I think that's a lot like, that's true. Yeah, a I've lot of that, like, being like, what's the best language? <laughs> well, yeah, well, it's funny. And I've heard there's jobs where they hire people for a language they've never worked with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, we had if, a, uh, if your logic is strong mm -hmm. and your ability to build like mental models or like, uh, I guess, uh, al algorithms, I guess that would be the word. Algor Absolutely. Yeah. I would say data tables, algorithms, um, and sorting, sorting algorithms are like three just. Man, uh, yeah, because you know, like a, a lot of folks, because we're just talking about mm -hmm. JavaScript is hot and everyone loves JavaScript and it's super dope and it is super dope. I love it a lot. It's a really cool language, but man, oh man, am I glad that it wasn't the first language that I tried to learn. Um, yeah, man, yeah. Oh. I actually, I so actually, this is leading the next topic is uh, j the the few JavaScript assignments we had in week seven. Yeah, I actually I breathed through it. Like, because nice. uh, it was, I mean, they did a really good, great job where they, they showed you this is how you'd code it in Ruby, and then this is how you code it in JavaScript. And they had a ton mm -hmm. of examples like that where they were just like, figure out for yourself what each of these things do. And I was able to, like, I think for like 90% of it, like, like, just looking at it, I'm like, oh, okay, like, yeah, that's what this will do. This, and they said, like, try to figure it out before you hit the run button. The instruction uh, was really concise. Yeah. For sure, I really, I really like that, and uh, yeah, I felt the same way. Was, like, like I said, the the big uh, struggle I've had with JavaScript on Code Wars is I don't understand how the return statements work well enough yet, and that's like a huge part of the challenges on Code Wars is all based on return this value. Yeah, uh, and I, for people that are going to use Code Wars, I'd I'd honestly advise you not to start using it until you do the RSpec testing part of Ruby, which I guess is week six. I mean, if you're really on top of it, sure. Like, like before phase zero starts, if you can do the challenges, absolutely. Yeah. But I, I, it's kind of good when I started. I knew enough Ruby to really, like I can solve all the challenges on there. I'm just not doing them the best way I could. And that's how I'm learning. It's looking at people doing uh, better solutions. But, uh, yeah, like JavaScript was not a hard transition for me, though I think, I think we that's something where we really need the bolster, which is hence the topics topic later on resources. We really need to bolster our understanding of JavaScript outside of the program because it's not the emphasis, and it is one of the top three most popular languages. It, it, um, it, from Dev Bootcamp's terms, at least from what because. I know Gabe definitely, it sounds like Gabe had a really great time with JavaScript. And I would say I had a bit more of a difficult time kind of like absorbing it. Um, the the big thing here is the introduction, at least on Dev Bootcamp's end, was fantastic. Uh, because they, they go into the uh, the week going like, listen, you've been Rubying this whole time. And you, you have a really great understanding of Ruby at this point. Um, and their point here in JavaScript is like, you're going to do all of this, and it's going to sound like we're just kind of like throwing it on top of you, but we promise we're not. It, you, you kind of already know like the, the language and the kind of philosophy behind making it. I would say my gut reaction to it, and yeah. if there is a developer like watching this video, he'll probably cry a little, but uh, <laughs> JavaScript is a little bit like Ruby, just with more curly braces. <laughs> like, that was my initial thought when I was looking at it. I was like, okay, cool. So, just slap some curlies on that, and that's, that's JavaScript. Yeah. Cool. Throwing some, throwing some pieces for us to see. Why not? <laughs> and like, and and you know, like functional versus object oriented. It's obviously huger than that. But uh, it, yeah. it, it, there's it, also a lot less methods in JavaScript. Yeah, <laughs> and that's where you are. Like, oh god, like the things that you did take for granted in Ruby. Yeah. They just don't freaking exist in JavaScript. You just got to keep building yeah. counters. <laughs> <laughs> you do. So, uh, like, uh, the, the, the language, it's, the introduction was fantastic. Like, mm. I, and I gained a lot of confidence in learning JavaScript through those introductions, even if I had trouble. Because the assessment for that week, I did it. It's done. It's good. Mm. Um, but towards the tail end of it, there are just some concepts where, like, I was, like, so frustrated with, like, approaching it and working it where you're just like, huh. Because th there's going to be a lot of points in JavaScript where when, when you make a mistake in JavaScript, it's not as apparent or it, it doesn't. Ruby is very talkative. 
um, when you when you input something in Ruby and when you try to like run it, Ruby is quick to be like, you screwed this up and this is where you screwed it up. JavaScript just will appear as a blank line, or it, it'll, it'll be very like if you're running through Node at least, it, it's it's not as communicative about your errors. I, I think I've found myself just like staring and screaming at a screen and not understanding why something wasn't doing what I wanted it to do until I forgot a damn curly brace somewhere. And <laughs> there's not a lot of indication of that when you're practicing JavaScript. Yeah. Uh, so I guess <laughs> on a smart ass note, look for a JavaScript linter for your text editor. That might help a lot. A JavaScript uh, what? A JavaScript linter. I don't even know what that is. What? Oh, man. Yeah, G give me an education here, man. Uh, a linter is just kind of something, and maybe this is wrong, but from what I've gathered using one is it will look, it's, it's, it's a modification or a plugin that you can add to a text editor, whether it be Sublime, Vim, VS Code, which I use, uh, that pretty much when you're typing something out, it will start highlighting any potential syntax errors or formatting errors in your code. Um, <laughs> hell, what? I use this, dude, I, I straight up, like, it's a little bit, it so might, this is like this is yeah. like the uh, rather than talking about how old I am, rather than running uh, running like spell check, this is like how everything automatically tells you when you're misspelling words now. Oh, I'm even though sometimes the spell check is wrong and it's really annoying, but like <laughs> sometimes, sometimes like and there's linters for everything, and yeah. and I guess because I I was a huge fan of it um, using wow. Visual Studio Code. Uh, which has a ton of plugin support and extensions for uh, it, well, it comes with HTML and CSS extensions to begin with. So if you're typing things out and you want to type something specific and it's wrong, VSC will kind of highlight it and be like, did you mean this? Or maybe you were looking for one wow. of these. Cool. Um, with Ruby, there's uh, I love RuboCop, which I don't believe is a linter. I think it's a formatter. But long story short, if you type up some Ruby and if your spacing is weird or if it looks like you could use an if statement and kind of clean it up better, it'll format it automatically. And huh. maybe this is a little cheaty. Uh, I wouldn't say cheaty. I don't know. But I mean, it's super I think nice to like have those, it organized. Yeah, those things. I mean, it's exactly like the auto spell check. If you use it to learn. Mm -hmm. Right, you know, like, uh, like if if you're not just like, oh, I'm just going to write whatever and it's going to fix it. That's like, don't have that attitude. But, and it's not going to happen that way. You, yeah, you, you yeah, definitely it's not going to work. <laughs> type out your like, don't go into this being like, oh, bro, linter DBC, good to go. Yeah. Like, it's like it's yeah. like it's like the uh, like a bro writing a college paper and using the thesaurus. Yeah, it, to make it, it sound smart. Yeah. Man, <laughs> substituting words. All like, right, so if it works like that, then anyone can be a uh, programmer. I'm going to make the official decision. I already felt this way. This is going to be an adult podcast. Here's <laughs> this uh, Mark Twain quote. It's one of my favorite quotes, and I was reminded of it a couple days ago. I can say this. So someone had posted uh, on the cultural discussion, and they'd used the word "very" a couple times in their writing. And so this is like the English nerd in me. There's this Mark Twain quote that, that goes, is like, as a writer, every time you're tempted to write very, instead replace it with the word damn. <laughs> and that way your editor will remove all the words and the writing should be as it should. <laughs> and I just like that. It's right. Like rather than like, it was very good. It's like, it was damn good. <laughs> damn good. I like it a lot. Damn educational. <laughs> But then you know all of them get deleted, and the writing is because don't use very like. Yeah. I find I use just too much. Yeah, like, like don't say very angry, just. say livid. <laughs> There's a word for this. Yeah, <laughs> just absolutely like, learn them. English so, is so great. I love language. Um, but yeah, in, in in that kind of closing, uh, JavaScript was fantastic, and it was definitely intimidating jumping into it from Ruby. But at the same time, yeah, a lot I'm of it's. Really it definitely has a lot of similarities in Ruby and in any kind of... You start to understand that they are kind of all related. They just have their own kind of rules and obligations. Awesome. And uh, I'm going to say this just so you hear this now, Mitchell. This is going really great. So I think I'm just going to cut this up into multiple parts. Sure. Once it finishes, even though I think we're going to go over an hour. Yeah, hopefully. absolutely. Um, but, okay, anyway. Uh, yeah. No problem. That stays in there. Hey, audience. So now yeah. you know, this, this is thoroughly being planned. I mean, there is uh, there is a structure of topics we're going to cover, but I don't want to make anyone watch too much content at once. Uh, Agreed. I'll 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 load the 
full edition at the end after each of the <laughs> parts are loaded. But uh, okay, um, the uh, the following week we covered SQLite in week eight, which I think you and me messaged a little bit while that was going on. Mm-hmm. I had a hard time with that, and uh, so my dad had a computer science background. And when I was talking to him about it, his comment was, well, well, he, he, he says, like, he thought part of what I was struggling with wasn't even the program. It was just understanding how databases work. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't necessarily think that was my struggle just because, like, I used to work with spreadsheets. And it's not a perfect model, but uh, I think if you think of multiple spreadsheets that are linked to each other, that's kind of like a database on some levels, but there are differences. There's definitely differences. Um, yeah, so like, how, how was how was SQLite for you now that we're, we went through that week? Like, it's, it's, it's a cranky old man of a, of a <laughs> database. I mean, this is something yeah. that was made in 1995. And oh, for been- real? It's that old? Oh yeah, and it's like, and you are going. Uh, this is definitely a career thing. Uh, you are going to be using databases. You might not be using SQL. Uh, I know, like, there's tons of different databases out there. Yeah. They all do different things, but the format and like messing with these types of tables and rows and these structures is definitely a daily life thing for a programmer to be messing with. Um, Dev Bootcamp was just so kind to give us one that was old fart tier. But it's important because you it's because it is it's strict and it's so unforgiving in how mm-hmm. you have to type each hotkey and you have to type not hotkey, you have to type each command just right. And if you don't, you're retyping everything and it will laugh as you're doing it. Um, yeah. I I I came in very frustrated with SQL. Um, and and there's still so much more to learn. I barely grasped the surface of it. Um, but coming out of it, I gotten a bit more comfortable, at least on the result. I mean, I think you would agree too. Like we definitely made it past it and we made through the SQL yeah. assessment. Yes, we did. I, uh, I actually, I went outside the curriculum a little bit cause like the logic of the syntax just wasn't really gelling for me. Mm-hmm. I think that's one of the really big issues. Like I, I didn't, what helped was I actually, I wound up going on code Academy. I was like, Fuck! I just gotta teach myself SQLite. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's where I was at. Yeah, because uh, this this is not working for me. And I mean, that's a classic. I think study tool for people who are really serious about their craft. If learning through one style isn't working for you, just do another one. And uh, I didn't complete the Tracking Code Academy. I think it's like four hours long though, which was one reason I was like, I got time for this. And I did like the first quarter of it, but it made enough of a difference. And I actually wrote this in my feedback to DBC because they asked us that every week. It's like, do you have any feedback on the curriculum? Um, on DBC, and I understand now why they did it because it's how it will look when you use it in Ruby or HTML. But they, the SQLite commands, they'd write them like all on one line, like the whole chain of commands. Mm-hmm. And reading it that way, it was like just threw me off enough. Yep. Um, whereas on Code Academy, they would they would write each word of the command they'd write, and then like the uh, you don't call it a variable, but whatever you want to call it, like the table or the value. Yeah. They it would just be the command, and then that value, and then new line, next stage of the command, value that goes with that new line. And seeing it broken into that way, suddenly, like I understood what every single word was doing yeah. in SQLite. Because the command doesn't end until you type a semicolon. Exactly. So any, any line break is okay. So, so suddenly, it, it was it's it was such a small thing, but reading the syntax like this instead of like that, suddenly yeah. that was when I was like, oh, okay, I think I understand. This goes yeah. back to being able to read your code out loud and like what every stage of it is doing. Mm-hmm. That's what let me do that. Yeah, they introduced a join as like a one line, and that was from this table. Yeah, where this is true, like seeing it that way, like it 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 made the world a difference for me. 
Yep. Um, I remember being so frustrated with joins because they introduce it as a one line function. And then when you're trying to do it again, it's just not like joins require so many extra parameters. And if you're trying to type that crap up in yeah. one line, you're going to have a horrible time. Uh, just and like uh, that we could break it down. Part of what, like something that was really time consuming on the SQLite week for me was even, uh, oh, she hasn't been on here. I was pairing with Brittany on one of the assignments who, you know, uh, and like we spent like 20 minutes on one of the challenges. We had, we knew exactly that we didn't know we knew what we needed to do, but apparently we did, mm -hmm. but we spent like 20 minutes figuring out the order we should write the commands. Like even usually using W3 school, like, and like seeing like they're saying, Oh, this is how you write it. But we weren't quite doing the order right in all the parameters. And so like we're having an experiment, like, moving chunks back and forth and we finally figured it out. Like it yeah. was very much struggling blindly through the alley solving that curriculum. And uh, which I don't think, I don't, I, I don't think it was an issue with DBC. I, I think it, it's like you said, it's a very unforgiving language. It doesn't give you, when you screw up, it doesn't really give you feedback. Like it kind of does where it says there's a mistake near and then I'll give you a word that was in the code, which might have been multiple times in what the command you just put in. Because like commands mm -hmm. will have like like three to I guess you could even have like six or seven parts to them. And the word might show up more than once, especially if you're making a table. Uh, and it'll just say like uh, there is a mistake near uh, varchar. That's mm -hmm. what I like to call it, Varchar 255. Varchar. I can remember it. Then I think Charizard. I'm like, okay, Varchar. <laughs> Variable Charizard. <laughs> um, yeah, 255, got to catch them all. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that would be, would be funny. Um, so, yeah, I, I need to spend more time on databases. Like, I, I'm glad they introduced us. I'm glad they introduced us on one of the harder, I, I guess from your, what you're saying, it sounds like it's one of the harder languages. It is. And it's, uh, I guess that since it's that old, it probably informed how a lot of the modern database uh, software was created. Because mm -hmm. like the earlier something is, the more ubiquitous it is in the industry on some level. And if a company just sets its framework as that from the get-go? Yeah, why probably... are they going to change? Yeah. Like, so we, we probably will still have to use SQLite at some point. 100%. Um, so the, this takes us to the final week of phase zero, which we have completed. I, I got all my work done yesterday. Yep, this, same. Uh, <laughs> which, oh my God, I was up so late Thursday. And I, I will say this, like, uh, so I was doing a lot of stuff like moving, like I went back to Maryland for a few days, so I had the flights with that, um, getting my apartment set up in Chicago. And I like, I wanted to cry when I read the introduction this week, where they said they're like, hey, so this is kind of a weird week in the curriculum. They're like, because some of you have a lot of time on your hands and can really go in depth. Another of you are like trying to set up your places and have a lot to do, and you really don't have much time at all. So they set up they set up the curriculum for this week so you can go really in depth on the topics if you want to, but if you don't have the time, kind of like me, uh, you can kind of do a more abridged, faster version. And what I'm doing is whatever time I have on Sunday, I'm just like going back over everything I already did. And I think like I, I did research all the optional topics, but I didn't necessarily like write up responses on all of them yet. This week was on uh, templating websites. And oh yeah, just the it's the science I was on it. The science of HTTP and how how a computer interacts with a server to like like what, what your computer is doing when it's going on Facebook. Um, so, so it talks about a lot of just like server ideals. Uh, mm -hmm. It kind of touches on VPNs, virtual private networks, or not, yeah, virtual private yeah. networks. Um, and or is it VPS? Virtual private servers, you're right. I think it is a yeah. VPS, yeah. Um, so, so uh, what are cookies? Yeah. I watched a fun few videos of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then it also kind of, it does a little splash of JavaScript with jQuery because that's super hip and mm -hmm. neat. And then it kind of tops it all off with just a general uh, the, the templating uh, to, to kind of, and it's wonderful. Um, I, I 
greatly enjoyed this week because, as you said, it's definitely, like, do at your own pace, which is a big weakness of mine. I, I found yeah. out this week, definitely, like, if I get have – if it's so open-ended. Oh, yeah, you'll go in deep. I, I knew that yeah. even when – I think when you and me paired together, we definitely got off task a few times just, Easily. like – just rabbit hole. <laughs> just, yeah, just like it's like, hey, I wonder if this exists in Ruby <laughs> or, or whatever language we're doing. Oh, man. exactly. It might have even been like HTML or something. Uh, I think it was at that point because HTML yeah. is like there's so many options. And with jQuery, or in CSS, yeah. jQuery is the biggest freaking rabbit hole you could fall into just because, yeah. man, my character. I, I have to cut myself and, off. Yeah. But yeah. so it was a great week in that sense. Uh, it's also just a good time for us to kind of meditate on what we know and get ready to have panic attacks for phase one. Uh, so it, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, they uh, j- just so the listeners know, they also had us use Sinatra. Yes. Which I guess for templating. Yeah, for templating, and I, 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 I was thinking I was like, oh yeah, it's this big thing using Sinatra, but thinking about now, it really isn't at all. <laughs> I, I still don't know enough enough about like because. Doesn't Rails provide a templating framework? Like yes. I don't know. Yes, that, that was one of the things they asked us. They're like, are there other temp- or are there other yeah. frameworks you can use? And that's when I saw, oh, yeah. Ruby on Rails, da da, like light at the end of the tunnel. So like, like uh, I guess we learned Sinatra, but like I don't think we're gonna be using Sinatra yeah. at all for phase one. I think we're just jumping straight into Rails because that's the framework for Ruby. Like from yeah. one. For sure. Um, so it was cool to be exposed to it. It was very cool to mm-hmm. explore it from a browser and not just like your local computer. I think that's really um, like, did you, did you find yourself like reading web pages differently? Like just like the uh, little bar? Yeah, a little bit. And yeah. that, that was nice. It's one of the things they showed us how to do was you can view a web page. I knew we already knew you could look at the code. Mm-hmm. They showed us how to like mess around with a web page that already exists. The DOM. Yeah. And like, so you could just, I mean, I don't just to have the most basic reference. You could change the color of all the text or the background for the entire page you're looking at or the sizing. You can resize the font. Like if you're reading this really annoying tiny font page, you could just make it. I mean, you can also expand in most browsers, but locally, if for some reason you didn't want to do that yeah, or, or you want or like the text is going off the page, I, I guess I've encountered that when there's a, 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 user interface issues. I forget what you call it. There's a specific word that has to do with like mobile first desktop. Like responsive design? Responsive design, yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was also nice this week because we went back to using HTML some and CSS and like realizing how much of that has stuck. Because like like with some of the projects you're like, oh like have a web page you're gonna mess with. And I just quickly code a web page like in mm-hmm. like two minutes. Full of content. Like and uh, that's really cool that despite the pace, a lot of this content sticking with us. Um, what's also nice about week nine is that they told us like the objectives for the week were do what you can. And the other objective was forgive the rest, which them giving me permission to not kill myself like on the curriculum this week was huge. Cause like yeah. that, that emotionally takes a, a toll on me when I feel like I'm not doing everything I can, possibly can to Agreed. reach my goals or work towards things I want to get better at. Um, which is productive but not always healthy. <laughs> uh, it keeps me motivated. I'm naturally motivated. Yeah. Um, it was a good week. I enjoyed it a lot. It was. It, it, was a, it was a very comfortable refresher on things that we've been working on throughout these nine weeks um, with just a little like extra sugar on top of what's to come for phase one. It was a great preview. Yeah. 